Thanks very much. So, um, Nathan is much younger and handsomer than I am, but you know, I hope I'll do. Um, so I'm Tim, I'm one of the hugest guys, geeks, um, actually self-confessed geek. I'm right there on the, where was it, the um, thinking about my pocket calculator when I go to sleep into the scale from last night. Um, and as has been already mentioned, Nathan was going to give this talk, and he's also a, a solid geek in his own right, and I'm, I'm sorry that he couldn't be here, but I hope I, I do his talk justice for him today. Um, so I'm here to tell you about QGIS, uh, QGIS for All, and um, uh, hopefully give you a little bit of behind the scenes about how the project works and tell you about some of the cool things we're doing and um, why QGIS is the best thing since um, sliced cheese. So uh, we're going to look at how QGIS is, is uh, a great tool for users, a great tool for developers, a great place for documenters to hang out, and a great place for you sponsors and donors to send us your millions in um, small bills. So first, let's have a look a little bit at our users. Um, you've seen some talks earlier today about um, um, InnerSafe and um, this is Mahadika. She's one of the InnerSafe users and she's a nice example of um, somebody who's uh, probably never in a right going to be able to afford to buy an E dollar RI product. Um, but she can use QGIS and she can learn about, um, about GIS and spatial data and she's got all the tools she needs um, because um, projects like QGIS and the other great things that we've seen here at the conference are, are available to her. And in South Africa, where I live, the best country on earth, um, there are many people that are really below the breadline or they don't have a lot of access to, um, to uh, e dollar ri products and other ones like them. And um, they're really, open source gives them a leg up in life. They, if they're interested in computers, they've got everything they need to go and um, take advantage of that and build their skills and earn themselves an income. And we've been uh, very active in South Africa. We try to be active. You've probably seen a very tall guy in the audience. Where's you? Where are you going? <laughs> there. And, uh, and uh, a not so tall guy, Graham, that's uh, hanging around the conference. And uh, the three of us have been trying to promote um, open source GIS in South Africa. And it's really gratifying to see when we give a course and a bunch of people come along and um, they would, they would never have um, been able to use um, QGIS before, or uh, sorry, GIS before, and suddenly there's this great tool that we can give them. And um, the story is the same all over the show. This is a this is a nice picture. Those are elephants, in case you um, you come from Europe and don't know what a big large animal is. <laughs> this is a picture from a helicopter of um, an annual elephant survey and in a game reserve and the. the the girl that works in the, in the game reserve wrote to me, it's a typical kind of email, help my, my, my queue just went to XYZ, can you help me? Um, and when they're, when they're nice emails, then I reply, and when they're not one, nice ones, I say go to the mailing list and, and ask there. Um, but this one was nice because I like elephants, and she was telling me about how they, they record all the elephant um, population from helicopter, and then they go back to the office, and they, um, they put the elephant sightings into QGIS, and then um, they can see where the elephants are. And unfortunately, we don't have real-time poacher tracking, but that's probably a feature that we should add to QGIS in the, in the near future. Um, and so they're really doing great things for, for humanity and, and biodiversity with QGIS. I had to throw in a slide for, for Australia just because Nathan was, uh, is Australian and he would have no doubt had a lot more Australian stories. But in Australia, QGIS is being used in local government and people are um, recording all the city infrastructure on QGIS and um, really using it in a, in a production environment to do great things to run their towns and cities. And in Tanzania, where I've been working, it's the same story again. I go to a place and the people have never had a chance to use a GIS before. I, even some of them from university departments that are working in geospatial things, but they've never had hands on a proper GIS before. And we train them in QGIS, and the people are smiling, such big smiles, um, and, and really thrilled to be able to, to get access to all their spatial data. Marco Hugentabla is another developer from QGIS, and I went on a trip to Tanzania, and we, we met a guy, um, uh, and we went to his office and, he, and they showed us they've got a, a, a post-GIS database. 
and um, they had all the biodiversity data, all the species observations for Tanzania in the database. But the guy had never seen the species data on a map. We sat with him in his office for an hour, we installed QGIS, we connected him to his process database, and within an hour he was printing out maps of the biodiversity um, uh, information that they had in their database. It's a really powerful enabling tool for people. And in Brazil, uh, Luis Mata, who's somewhere maybe in the audience here, um, uh, and his colleagues are working in Amazon. They're going out to um, people who are living on the, the, um, in the forest and training them to use QGIS and helping them to use QGIS to map where deforestation is occurring and, and help them to conserve their, their ecosystem around them. He asked me to mention that this is part of the Inclui Geo project. I hope I said that right. And all around the world, you'll find the same stories. These are just ones that I know of and sort of had five minutes to tell you about. But if you ask anybody what they're doing with QGIS, they've always got an interesting story about how they're using it in new and exciting ways. These are just some of the people that have um, registered. Um, this map was made in QGIS, by the way. Uh, <laughs> these are just some of the people that have registered on our site as users. And um, uh, really, um, we actually had a few people in the earlier version of our, our web mapping application that registered as being in outer space, but I've excluded them from this slide. But um, all the planetary dwellers that are using QGIS um, uh, here, and you can really see we, we're getting into every nook and cranny of the, of the planet. And um, probably the people in the, in the unmapped bits are, are just um, uh, haven't done about our website where you can come and register yourself. So. Uh, it's quite interesting to see how the project has grown in terms of our user base. And uh, it's a bit of a difficult problem when you're an open source project to you know how many people are using your software. If we were uh, a proprietary company, we'd probably have uh, some nasty little activation thing to make you go through, and then we'd count you, and uh, we'd probably collect all your demographics, sell them to the NSA while we're doing it, and we'd, really we'd be knowing exactly what was going on. But um, as, a, as an open source project, it's kind of guesswork. We've got this tool on our website which counts how many people download our software. So uh, would anybody like to hazard a guess how many copies of QGIS 1.4 were downloaded? It's an open source talk, so you can just all submit your patch to my missing bit of knowledge. Sorry? 10,000. 10, Let's see if you're right. 71,000. No prize for you, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the story just gets more and more exciting. Every release we have, more and more people are downloading our software. 109,000 people downloaded QGIS 1.5. 188,000 downloaded QGIS 1.6. 250,000 downloaded 1.7. And what about some, some guesses for 1.8? <laughs> You're all wrong. <laughs> 475,000 people downloaded QGIS 1.8. I can't commit to how many of those were Chinese um, bot nets that just came to visit our site and grab our software, but as an indication, I think it's a fairly good um, yardstick for the project because um, for every bot net that was downloading 10 copies, there were also 10 people who were grabbing copies of QGIS and sharing it around with, on, a, on a memory stick and taking it to a training course and sharing it amongst the people in the course. So um, it could be well uh, higher than that or it could be around this figure. But it's quite exciting for us. So um, we've seen a bit about the users. And let me tell you a bit about the developers. So in the beginning, the earth was dark. <laughs> There was nobody on there on the earth doing anything interesting. And then one day in 2002, July 2002, an Alaskan dude in his basement, hiding out from the cold, dark, snowy conditions outside, sat down in front of his computer and started to write QGIS. And his name is Gary Sherman. He's kind of a mythical figure for us because um, he kind of stays in the wastelands of Alaska. He's never come to, I think somebody may, has anybody met him? Anybody met him? No, okay. He's a mythical figure. Ah, you've met him. He gave his hat. Ah. <laughs> we'll be auctioning the hat after the show. <laughs> 
And so he started to make something in his basement and um, he took an unusual step, not being an uh, e, double, uh, e dollar i kind of guy, e, double, e dollar ri guy, I'm going dyslexic here. Um, and he, um, he open sourced what he did. He said, uh, world, here is my QGIS version. I think it was 0.0000. So 0 means zero for the people who don't understand uh, South African. 0.00003 of QGIS. And um, he put it out there and he said, anybody want to try it? And uh, I know Marco Hugentobler is sitting in the middle there. was one of the first guys to try it out. I also tried it out and, and probably 10 other people tried it. And it was... It was kind of cool. It was like you open this thing up, you connect to your post just, and you could draw, you could change the color of the lines, and uh, could you pan, you could, you could pan, you could zoom, and that's it. That was, that was QGIS 0.0003. And, um, but because it was open source, it also gave us a platform to start doing things. Now this is, um, you asked for some geek stuff, so this is geek eye candy. This is basically the commit message of the first commit that he put into SVN, no, sorry, CVS. Um, if you don't know what CVS is, then you're, you're not far enough on the right of the geek scale. <laughs> this was the message he put into CVS saying, this is the initial revision, very unglamorous, and it was in July, two, uh, July uh, 6, 2002. I've got a little clip here, which I did an interview, you can read the... Uh, Watch the full thing on YouTube, which uh, I interviewed him on, over Skype. Um, uh, he was a better interviewee than I was an interviewer. But um, this little clip just is, in his own words, telling how uh, Q just began. So I'll just let that roll. Or try and let it roll. Real job, and in my own time, I'd done a lot of uh, GUI programming with the uh, Qt, I think as uh, the official name is, or Qt as most uh, Americans call it, C++ Toolkit. And I had been using that way before uh, actually the KDE project even started. I remember the email that announced uh, the ambitions of the KDE project. So I had a background in that, and I was actually using the toolkit in some work I was doing in my day job, uh, rendering uh, line data. And so I thought, Oh, this is kind of nice, I, you know, and I really would like to uh, to see some data from uh, PostGIS. I'd done a lot of work with proprietary spatial databases, and and there wasn't anything that I could find on Linux that would allow me to visualize my spatial data in PostGIS or PostGIS. So that was sort of the uh, the uh, bug that got me going, and on a, a weekend to to sit down and fiddle around a bit and see if I could get some data on the screen. So it didn't start out with any grandiose plan to uh, conquer the world with an open source GIS. So no grandiose plans to conquer the world with the open source GIS, but we're taking on his uh, project and applying grandiose plans to conquer the world with an open source GIS for him. <laughs> so in the beginnings of the project, things were very informal. It was quite fun. You'd sort of... Uh, come along and you'd, uh, you'd write a few lines of code and then we'd decide, okay, let's do a release tomorrow and we'd do a release tomorrow and then it would be, the next version would be out and we have 0 0.00004 or something. That's not point not 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 four for the people that do understand South African English. So, um, and it was quite cool because uh, it was a small project and things were kind of like uh, very relaxed. So my dog got to be the splash screen of 0 0.003, and it was, uh, sorry, QGIS 02, and the release was called Pumpkin. It wasn't the name of our dog. It's a long story. I won't go into why it's called Pumpkin, but, um, and then we had um, other developers also had pets. So of course, we had to other have other pet splash screen, rele uh, splash screen releases, and I won't show you all of them, but um, of course, Gary had his uh, dog too, and so, um, we had uh, QGIS 0.5 Bandit, <laughs> one of our better releases. And then we went through a whole process of saying, okay, now we've got to get professional, no more pets on the splash screens, we've got to do something a bit more smart. So we did uh, planetary moons, uh, Saturn, Jupiter, what was it? I forget where, where the moons were. And we were going great guns with our moons, and then uh, some 
obscure GIS company, which nobody had ever heard of, wrote to us and said, well, you're infringing our trademark because we've already got an Enceladus or a Tethys or a something, and uh, I think it was Tethys. And so, uh, so we said, ah, hmm, we're sick of moons. These, not, these are not good for our splash screens. And so we changed to obscure places on Earth. So I think we had, uh, uh, well, we, we, we tried to find a few obscure places. We landed up doing, um, what was the first place? Copy up. I can't even say it. <laughs> that copy up one or whatever. It was actually, it was actually, um, it was actually quite a thoughtful named one because that was uh, the the town in Chile where people had been trapped in a, I think it was a copper mine, for uh, 30 days or something like that, and uh, and they finally managed to get them out, and it was quite a nice little place to name our, our release after. Um, and uh, but anyway, so we dropped the planets, and now we're doing places, and then we. We had a hack fest in Lisbon, so we said, okay, let's call the next one Lisboa, which we thought nobody could sue us for because we've called it Lisboa, see, not Lisbon, so it's different. So, and then, um, and, uh, and so we continued. Eleven years later, after Gary hid away in his basement and made the first version of QGIS, we've had 20,204 commits into our code base, which is um, more than you can shake a stick at. Um, We've had 172 contributors con uh, don donating their time and energy to um, make the code base better. We've now got 29 core committers in our, in our code base. We've got 4,300,000 lines of stuff. I say stuff because developers, you think they all just write code and curly brackets and stuff, but we also write kind of like um, uh, splash screens and what's the other, again, translation files and uh, all kinds of other stuff that lives in our code base. But um, a fair chunk of that is C++ code, which makes up the core of QGIS, as you know it. Um, according to this in incredibly accurate Cocoa model, which um, works out how much developer time has gone into the code base, we've got 1,267 years worth of man um, effort. So it's basically taking you back to um, nice where we were in medieval. My history is atrocious. So somewhere you could have started a medieval coding one man and you'd be at QGIS, uh, where we are today. <laughs> I don't know what kind of computer you would have been using, but... <laughs> and if you look at the contributions per month, we'll see that there's a nice upward trend where uh, in the beginning there was just a few people developing and, um, and, uh, and now we've got on average, uh, you know, sort of 30, 40 people um, ap applying changes to the code in any given month. And if you look at the commits per month, you'll also see we've got an upward trend. I'm not a statistician, so I don't know how to make a little line through there to show that the trend is going up. But, but uh, the activity in the, um, in the project is, I should have asked Barry Robinson to do that for me before I can. Um, the, the activity in the project is, is definitely increasing um, every month and um, to the point where we're at about 300 commits per month or so, and sometimes peaking over 500 when we're just gearing up for a release or something like that. So uh, this is also not a complete map, but these are the people that are, are working in QGIS. You see there's a definite bias towards Europe. I, I have no idea why that is. Maybe they all gravitate around Jürgen, who's the, <laughs> the brains of the project, or uh, uh, I don't know um, why there are more people in Europe contributing than, than in other places of the world. But, um, you know, we are spread right around the world and we're a virtual community. It's only in the last uh, four years or so that we've actually, is it four or five years that we started having get-togethers? We, we get together twice a, twice a year. But um, we're, we're just a bunch of guys who all kind of dig working on QGIS and we, and we get together and we hack. This is our last hack fest. So um, I remember when I knew every line of code in QGIS, I knew uh, where everything was. And at some point in the in evolution of um, the, the project, uh, I lost track of things. So people say, I'm using class XYZ in the code base. And I say, do we have a class XYZ in the code base? Because it's just getting so big. And now it's getting to the point where the people in the project are getting so many. We had 50 people. This is our, our hack fest that we had last week. We had 50 people more or less there. And I was going through them with Jürgen and saying, who's that now? Who's that? Because the people are just getting, the number of people involved are going, um, so fast, and um, the project is just blossoming. This is in the hack fest. This is the, what we do is we 
It's very geek. We all get together in the same room. We all log into IRC and then we just carry on talking to each other like we were doing back at home. <laughs> but at least we can see each other's facial expressions when we, when we make smileys at each other and so on. <laughs> and of course, we eat pizza. We ate around 160 pizzas in this Hackfest, which is a small achievement in itself. And uh, I can take a quick poll around the cutest developers. Would anybody like some pizza now? No. No. So we've kind of um, got our quotient of pizza for the next month or so. I don't have any statistical evidence to, to back this, but I think that you get a thousand lines of code per 160 pizzas. So uh, I once had a, a meeting with somebody and they said they were in a meeting with an anonymous consultant for anonymous proprietary vendor and they said, you can't trust those commie QGIS, uh, commie open source projects. They come one day and they disappear the next, they fly by night things. And, um, uh, and I'm here to tell you today that uh, with 35 releases, 10 years of coding, 4 million lines of stuff, we're here to stay, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. This week, there's been a lot of, uh, lot of activity in the project because um, this is the week that we release the next version of QGIS. Some of you have already got it because we kind of did a soft release. It was a bit hard to manage because we, we don't have um, Apple's kind of like infrastructure to press a big red button and then uh, suddenly the website changes, all the downloads are ready. We've got to put stuff into um, repositories and we've got to deal with people who've got them on their own websites and all kinds of things. So we put the code out, the, 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 the binaries out there this week, but we haven't really announced it. And we're announcing it now. QGIS 2.0 do 4 is out. <laughs> so um, QGIS 2.0 is named after, let me see if I get this right, Dufour Spitzer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which is the highest mountain in Switzerland and it's, it's noteworthy because um, Switzerland has got a great tradition of cartography, some of the world's premier cartography, um, sort of uh, uh, the people who developed the field of cartography um, come from Switzerland and, um, and uh, like we said we want to name our releases after obscure places and well you can't get much more obscure than do for Spitzer, Spitzer, so I think we're safe on the, the trademark front there. Um, but it's also a nod to the, QGIS, uh, the Swiss QGIS community. There's a bunch of the Swiss guys there. You can raise your hands and wave there <laughs> and here. Um, they've been really active. Maybe that cluster of dots that I showed in Europe, should have, I should have zoomed in a bit to show you just how much activity happens in Switzerland. They've, they've uh, been a huge boon to the project. Marco's actually uh, one of the few people in the project that's been longer in, involved in it than I have. I think he was third or something uh, in the project and I was fourth or fifth, something like that. Um, and um, they've, they've been instrumental in really bringing QGIS to the next level each time. So uh, one of the ways that they do that is um, a lot of uh, the, the, what we call a town council, a lot of the administrations are actually using QGIS in favor of open source software and they fund the things they need so that they're, they're producers as well as consumers what they do is they'll say well we would have spent 75,000 euros on an e dollar ri license this year and um, and why don't we take say half that money and we'll we'll pay for the features that we're missing in QGIS and so they fund directly the features they need to do their work and um, because it's all open source and they're giving it all back to the community um, everything comes back to you and you use it on your desktop the next release and you don't even realize that um, some nice guy in, in Switzerland was actually paying for the for the software that you're using and that's the whole point of open source and the whole point of of the model of QGIS and and other projects like us that we all the rising tide is lifting all the boats you know we we all want to want to make it better but um, we can all benefit from the other the work other people are doing so Something else that we've been doing is uh, rebranding ourselves because nobody can say quantum GAs. I don't know why. They're paralyzed from the tongue or something. But um, 
we used to have a, a nice YouTube video which said, uh, my name is Paolo Cavallini and I say quantum GIS. And then another one would say quantum GIS and another one would say, I can't say quantum. And then so it would go on. So <laughs> we decided to keep everything nice and simple for everybody. Um, and plus we also wanted to have a four letter acronym name like the other big players. So we, <laughs> we're branding ourselves <laughs> to QGIS. There's no dollars in the name, but we're working that. <laughs> so from now on, the project is now known as QGIS. Now, it's a little bit difficult because actually we found that we haven't really lost the pronunciation problem. We had a quick straw poll at lunch, and uh, the Italians say QGIS, and the Germans say QGIS, and the, uh, where else would we be? The Swiss, uh, the Americans say QGIS, something like that. <laughs> And of course, South Africans, we have the right pronunciation as QGIS. So if you've got any doubt, then pick, your, pick the one of your regional flavors and stick with that. So it's our best release yet, QGIS 2.0. QGIS 2.4. Yeah, OK. <laughs> That's probably the weakest pun of the conference. I should get an award for that. <laughs> um, and Gary once said a very nice thing in the, in, uh, on the IRC channel. He said, even a blind pig finds an acorn in, once in a while. I'm not calling you blind pigs, but this is a lovely acorn that you've got. <laughs> so I just want to show you some eye candy now, some of the things that people in our community have been doing with QGIS 2 and uh, with the, the, the sort of pre-release version. This is Khmer. I don't even know how to say it, but that's, you know, like the Khmer Rouge. And um, can you see all those squiggly letters and everything? That's because we've got lovely Unicode support. This guy is so thrilled. He said, you know, look at the nice map I can make in Khmer because Q just supports my language and everything. And look at the beautiful layouts. Look at the colors. Isn't it pretty? So nice. It's all done with Q just 2.0. And these are just more examples of the kind of things that you can do with QGIS 2.0. This one is showing off that in the main canvas you can have graticules uh, as well as in the, in the layout, but also in the live canvas. This is, uh, hmm, is this interesting? Should I just skip this one, Mark? I think. <laughs> this is QGIS running on Android. You see that green man? That's an Android. If you're an Apple user, just ig ignore this part of the conversation because it's not for you. <laughs> QGIS running on Android, and um, it's basically the whole desktop application ported. Marco Bernasaki, you wave your hand up in the air. Wave your iPad in the air. Or your, sorry, not iPad. <laughs> your Android device in the air. Marco has been working like a demon to make um, uh, QGIS on Android a reality. And um, it's still not 100% ready yet, but it's, it's looking really good. This is a snapshot taken from yesterday. He's just got labels working. He had to bite a line all the, the geometries in, uh, in the labeling code. If that means nothing to you, don't worry. It's okay. It's just a geek thing you have to do when you're doing um, Android ports. And he's going through a lot of other challenges. He's busy getting Python to run on Android, so you'll be able to run your Python plug on, plugins on your, on your Android device. Um, and this is going to be huge for us because nobody's using desktop computers anymore. Everybody's using it. In fact, I've got about 100 cell phones pointing at me right now. Everybody's using a tablet, and um, we want to be right there on your tablet. This is going to be just one offering that we have. Other people, we saw at the Hackfest, for example, somebody's taken QGIS and stripped away the user interface, made a cute, quick, or QML um, user interface. If that means nothing to you, just plays over that part as well. Um, uh, for, for Android, and they've used it to, to make a gas detection, um, uh, leak detection system in Holland, um, and it's a beautiful looking um, application. You wouldn't even know that it's got QGIS under the hood. So we're really going to enter into a whole new world once we get um, onto the mobile platform. This is a nice kind of uh, study that was done showing um, the, the density of location of bike share um, points in, in Paris. And this is not a 3,000-year-old map. This is ma a map by Anita Grazer made three months ago using some of the new um, functionality available in QGIS. Um, 
they're called blend nodes so you can basically take any data any of your layers and blend them with other layers like you would do in a, a graphics program like the GIMP you see I didn't say Photoshop the GIMP and um, <laughs> if you don't know what the GIMP is well you're missing out um, so with the, with the new version of QGIS you can take um, a texture like an old piece of paper or something and then put it behind your map and then blend your map into it and make these beautiful looking um, uh, interesting maps this is a map that I made and it's really just trying to show off that in the in uh, the new QGIS we've got drop shadows behind our labels we can do shield labels on roads um, the the whole labeling system has been completely revamped a uh, massive undertaking and um, you can re really make beautifully um, designed maps with lovely cartography on them this is a map that was also put into our gallery and it's just um, beautifully done just lovely cartography and it's all made in QGIS um, who would have thought you know after 11, year, 11 years ago when Gary was sitting in his basement and all he wanted to do was draw a few lines well there's a few lines but they just look absolutely lovely okay this is just a mess I won't even okay this is a this is a cartogram I think showing movement of I forget whether it's trade or goods or whatever between different parts of Australia I think it is Uh, you wanted some curly brackets if you look carefully over here you'll see that we've got some curly brackets <laughs> and that for you curly bracket lovers is the expression used to make the color ramps on this map so just make a note of it quickly if you want to use it at home <laughs> so but it's showing off a nice feature of QGIS um, that you can now use color ramps with um, with transparency and we've got all these um, expressions in our expression system that allow you to interpolate a color along a color ramp and then make really interesting uh, meaningful maps where you can use um, alpha transparency and um, blend things to show uh, to produce more meaning in your maps and examples just go on and on I won't try to describe everyone in detail this one is showing data d data defined symbology properties which is another new feature being added to QGIS this is a, an example from um, the from Worcester Andreas Neumann who's busy taking a picture of it now excitedly <laughs> and just take a minute this is not a this is not a like a pretty picture map this is an engineering map and it's actually all the precise engineering of the town or is it the town of Worcester the town of Worcester every little linkage between what are we looking at Andreas wastewater, wastewater all in their wastewater system every linkage is put correctly um, typologically shown and um, all the symbology is perfect it's just at the most beautiful engineering map that you could have and um, it's all done in QGIS so another thing that we want to announce today is our new website Ta-da! okay that's not it <laughs> <laughs> Richard, David Further, and um, and the the documentation team have been working very very hard to make a new website which is more modern. Somebody said our old one looks a bit meh. So the new one is hopefully looking. And um, uh, we we were very fortunate as well to get um, uh, uh, support from Boundless, which used to be Open Geo, um, and they've really. Um, helped us giving us designer time and, and, and supporting our efforts to move our new website and I'm going to try to show it live there's this tool there's a rule in presentations that says you should never try to show something live but Richard assures me that it's uh, okay they already hit my first hurdle that's my IRC channel now hang on a minute <laughs> ah there we go so that's our new website it's simplified it's much cleaner it's got pretty pictures on the front page it tells you immediately when you arrive there what it is um, and you don't need a degree in linguistics to to make out what the purpose of the website is everything is beautifully um, um, coded so that it will work on your mobile device your cell phone or your your tablet and so it all scales down nicely um, we've got links we've got um, a great download page when you go to the download page 
It will automatically detect what operating system you are on. If you're a Windows user, it will tell you to bugger off. <laughs> if you're another operating system user, it will give you a nice download. Don't worry, Windows users, there's something for you too. <laughs> oh, and I should say, we've also got now a 64-bit version of uh, the Windows installer. So that means that if, you, uh, if you've got more than four gigs of RAM on your system, unlike some proprietary software which never ever released their software as 64 bits, you can now use all your RAM while you're using QGIS. Yeah. Thanks to Jürgen Fischer for spending how many nights compi recompiling the whole of OSGO4W on a 64-bit compiler so that it would work for you. So um, you, can, you can explore around the website and, and have a look. It's still, I think, a work in progress, but hopefully it's a more enjoyable experience for you. Um, one of the things we've been doing is, is trying to integrate a lot of our web properties, so the documentation, looks my, look like my internet just died, but that's okay, I've got the main thing across. Our, our uh, documentation is all integrated into the website. You can search the documentation and the website all in one go. Can somebody give my internet back, please? I was going to do something now with the internet. But Everybody's downloading, okay. Well, if you're all downloading, you might scupper the plans that I had for the rest of the talk, which... Ah, yeah, I can see it. <laughs> right, okay. I'm trying to find my documentation again. My nickname on IRC is Tim Linux. That's, that's me there, but I'm using a Mac, which is a bit um, strange. So just bear with me while I find my presentation again. There we go. No? Yeah? Where's my mask on? You can all read Barry's tweet while I find my cursor. <laughs> It really has lost my cursor, I don't know. <laughs> this is why I use Linux, because it doesn't steal your cursor every time you, you jump off your presentation. Maybe if I press this, ah, there we go. <coughs> Pressing the escape key works just like in Vim. <laughs> okay, we saw that the website demo. So I've talked about the people that use QGIS and the people that make QGIS, and now I would like to tell you about the people that can help us make QGIS better, and that's you, the sponsors and donors. If you don't know that you're a sponsor and donor yet, we're strongly encouraging you to become a sponsor and donor to QGIS. So um, when we started out QGIS, we were basically just a bunch of guys in our basements um, doing stuff, and um, as the project's grown, <laughs> It's become more and more demanding on us, both on our time and on our resources. We used to run the website on my server, and Gary ran some things on his server, and uh, we had a few bits and pieces. Now um, we use an OSGO server, but we've got a lot of things that the, the project costs money to run. For example, we're trying to trademark our name, QGIS, so that some guy from some obscure GIS company doesn't come and try and sue us again. And um, we're trying, to, we're trying to make the project better and better all the time, but it takes resources and it takes funding. And um, I did a quick back of the envelope calculation that if you paid us the rate of a cleaner in England, which is six pounds fifty an hour, it's great money by the way, um, we would um, we would have it would have cost around ten thousand pounds to pay for the developers' time that were at the Hackfest last week. But um, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the amount of time that's being donated to um, to the project by the people that are working on the, on the software. And we don't really ask anything back, but it would be nice that we didn't have to take thing, money out of our own pocket as well and pay for the important things that we need to, to keep the, the project running. So we started a, a sponsorship program, and um, we've been very fortunate to have sponsors um, come forward and, and help us with the project. Um, our, uh, our greatest coup was getting our first gold sponsor this year, which is from the Asia Air Survey. Are you here, Matteo? Thank you very much. <laughs> it's
And we've also had great sponsorship from, um, from the, the Swiss community and from the German community who've um, really helped us um, keep the project going, keep all the expenses defrayed. And Austria. Let me not forget Austria. So if you want to sponsor Q just for a mere paltry 27,000 euros, you can become a platinum sponsor. Anybody got a spare 27,000? You can sign up in the front here with Paolo. Um, for 9,000 euros, you get a gold badge. Again, see Paolo. And uh, silver sponsors, 3,000 euros a year. And bronze sponsors, 700 euros a year. So uh, it doesn't take much to become a bronze sponsor. You could probably um, skip a couple of Burger King meals and you'd be able to help us a lot. Okay, I'll finish hitting you up for cash now. I would like to point out that we've got two programs. We've got a, a sponsorship program and a dona donations program. So the sponsorship program gets you the little badge and, um, uh, and the donors program is for micro donations. So if you want to just give us uh, 10 euros or, or 100 euros or bigger micro amounts like 1,000 euros, then um, uh, you can go along to our PayPal um, site Again, if you can't find it, speak to Paolo. Paolo, wave furiously. <laughs> Paolo's the money guy. <laughs> Actually, when we started uh, the project, we didn't have a project steering committee. Then we started one and we said, geez, we've got, we've got to find somebody to do with the money. And none of us wanted to touch anything to do with money. We're all hippies and geeks and whatever. And we said, we don't care about money. But uh, Paolo came forward and he said, he'll, he'll do the money. And it's been really great to have somebody look after the money stuff for us. Um, So we always tell people when they fund us that we use the funds at the discretion of the QGIS project. That means that we reserve the right to spend as much of the money that you donate on pizza as we think is necessary to keep our fund access going. <laughs> we also have other people that contribute um, features to QGIS by funding them directly. And it's a great model for you out there that need something in QGIS that's missing and you can approach one of the developers. There's about 15 or 20 of them in the room here today and you can find them on, uh, there's a, a, a list of them. Do we still have a list of them on our website? If we don't, they'll be back soon. They might have been lost in trans translation, but there is, okay. And, um, and you can also come onto our mailing list and say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to build me feature XYZ and somebody will come and give you a quote. And um, this is a really great way of, um, of supporting QGIS because you get what you want so it's not uh, going to be spent on pizza, it's going to be spent on code. And, um, and the developer will guide you and help you to build a feature that's going to be of um, use to the whole community. So um, we have a kind of a clause there that says, um, like, if you, if you build a new feature and, um, and you want to see it make its way into QGIS, we will only accept features that have got a broad um, uh, user base. So we're not going to take um, uh, uh, some obscure tool to account the the hairs on your mouse's back or something like that. Um, if it's not going to be useful for a lot of people, we won't accept it. But in the, in the main part, if you contact a developer, they'll advise you on how um, to build something that will be acceptable into the community. And um, then you can see your feature in the next release. And it's really great. We had the World Bank um, and the GFDRR. We've, we, we, there's been some talks from them. Um, during this week, and we've had um, Australian Age, it's just my personal experience, and there's the other people that you see in, in front of you that have um, come and said, well, we need things. So we, from the World Bank and, and Australian Aid, we got all the new snapping stuff in the composer and the scale bar that works in um, EPSG 4326 and uh, um, uh, web um, widgets on the composer. And that was all funded by, by people saying, we just want to support specific features in QGIS, and now everybody gets to enjoy it. So um, I probably didn't exhaustively list everybody who's added features, and well, I know I didn't. So there are many other people that have been contributing features to QGIS, and we really do thank you for all your contributions. I've mentioned that, uh, that one already. The other kind of people that we have are the, the hackers, the geeks, and those are the kind of people that um, hopefully this room is filled with. And, um, and those are the best kind of people in the way because they come along to the project like Jürgen Fischer did, and he said, um, I like working on Postgres 
raw SQL query optimization or some kind of arcane thing. I don't know what he said when he arrived. And um, <laughs> he said, okay, here you go. And uh, we, 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 we get them going on that bit of the code. And the next thing you know, they're just improving and uh, making the product better for everybody. And um, so we encourage you, if you've got some kind of geeky bent to your personality, come along and hack on our code base and, and give us your new features. We'd, be, we'd love to have them. So um, this is really just to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody that works on QGIS. Uh, thank you to Gary Sherman for hiding away in your basement one dark winter and giving us the, the spark that became QGIS as we know today. Thank you to all the QGIS committers. It's just been phenomenal these last 11 years being on the, involved with all of you and uh, I've, I can really count you as all great friends and um, we are, we are a great circle of, of geeks all just pulling along for a common cause. Um, thank you for all the people that document the code and for, for helping on our mailing lists. You just wouldn't believe the number of people that are actually working to make QGIS a worthwhile program for everybody. Thank you for all the people that report bugs. Uh, that give us nice bug reports, not my windows crashing. Um, <laughs> and thank you for using the software, because if you don't use it, there's no point in us making it. So you all rock. Thank you very much. That was just incredible. Um, First of all, I just want to give you this little book, you uh, which is called uh, The Map Addict. Or, no, it's not. It's called The Wild Rover. It's not The Map Addict by Mike Parker. He's a map geek. He's very funny. And he autographed the books for us on Wednesday night. Um, we haven't been handing out a lot of Phosphor G Hero badges. And um, is there anybody in this room who would stand up and say that this guy is not a Phosphor G Hero? Dare you? No, I didn't think so. I'm really embarrassed here because actually what I needed was about 50 Phosphor G Hero badges in my pocket that I could give to every one of these committers. And I haven't got them at the moment, right? I'll so, spare mine. We can take it a week at a time. Please take it as a trophy. <laughs> take it as a, one as the symbol of a virtual 50. Thank you very much. I really wish I'd had a lot more printed na made now, but anyway, we think you're amazing. You are rock stars for us. A massive round of applause, please. Come on, that stand up, stand up. Come on, get out there. Yes. On your feet, come on. Was that amazing? Yes! You've just shown us, you've just shown us, first of all, that this is not a couple of geeks messing around. This is serious. 1,200 man years. You know, never mind the dollar word. I mean, this is an amazing achievement that we got. It's a flagship for our whole community. You showed us the business model. You showed us how people get involved. We're really grateful to you, Tim, and we're also grateful to you for standing up. So thanks very much indeed. Thanks. Right, now I know you all want to dash off Download QGIS 2.0 and start doing stuff with it, because actually that's what I'm going to go and do now. Um, but actually, this is the gathering of the tribes. This is the moment when we've got the OSGO AGM starting. Uh, we're running a little bit late, which I apologize for, but I don't think anybody wanted Tim to finish early on this. So. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jeff. Whilst I'm handing over to Jeff and he starts the AGM, there will be one or two people, amazingly, who don't actually plan to stay for the AGM. This is your opportunity to stand up without being embarrassed. I'm not going to point at you, I promise. Right? And you can slope off. Just 